Okay, we're going to look at an example here of solving this differential equation. So the first thing that we're going to do when you solve any differential equation is make sure you're clear about what type of differential equation it is because that instructs you about the methods you're going to use to solve it. So here we have a third order linear homogeneous differential equation, homogeneous because the right hand side is just the zero function, uh, with constant coefficients. So the coefficient functions for all of these terms involving y are just constants. So this is the simplest kind of higher order differential equation that we will learn to solve and we'll start with this and then build up to more complicated ones. But for this type, you should recognize what type it is and know that you should then write down the characteristic polynomial which uses the same coefficients that are in our differential equation, but the terms in the polynomial are power functions with powers equal to the order of these derivatives. So the first term would be an, an R cubed. Our book likes to use R. Some books use other letters. Our book likes to use R. So 1 R cubed plus 1 R squared plus negative 1 R to the first minus 1 r to the 0, so I won't write any r's, and then we want to set that equal to 0. We want to find the zeros of this characteristic polynomial. So the characteristic polynomial is the left-hand side. We call this sometimes a characteristic equation when I set that characteristic polynomial equal to 0. But what I want to find are the zeros of this characteristic polynomial, and then I can use those to build the linearly independent solutions that I need for this differential equation. Before we do that, just to kind of think about what we need and what we're aiming for, what our goal is going to be, because I have this third order linear homogeneous differential equation, I know that I need three linearly independent solutions, and if I can get that, then I can write down the general solution as just taking the linear combinations, all the possible linear combinations of those three linearly independent solutions. All right, so that's you don't have to write that down, but that's the idea and that's what you should have in your head your goal is when you're trying to solve this differential equation. Okay, so I just need to find the zeros of this polynomial. Uh, this one's maybe a little more difficult than some of them, although not too terribly difficult. So part of why I wanted to do this video was also to review a little bit of algebra that you might have forgotten. Uh, here, this is a fourth, or, or four terms in this polynomial. Uh, I know that I need to have three zeros for this polynomial. But with the four terms, that makes it a little bit more difficult to factor. So you can use some strategies like synthetic division if you remember how to do that. This one actually is pretty easy to factor, though, if you remember how to do factoring by grouping. So when you do factoring by grouping, you'll group the polynomial so that you have uh, two terms and maybe two terms. Or you can group it other ways, but for this one, we'll group two terms and two terms. And the key idea is that I factor the common factor out of those first two terms in that first group. So the common factor out of these two terms is r squared, and I'm left with r plus 1 when I do that. And then I want to factor a common factor out of these last two terms as well. And the goal is that when you do that, what you're left with in this parentheses, if that's the same in both groups, then you can factor that group out, factor that group out and finish your factoring strategy. So what I want to be left with is an r plus 1 in my second grouping here. So you want to be a little careful about that and kind of keep your eye on the finish line as you do this factoring. Uh, so in order to do that, at first you might say, well, the only common factor is 1, but we actually want to factor out a minus 1 so that we're left with r plus 1 in here. So if I factor out a minus 1, I'm left with r plus 1. And then I've got what I needed to be able to finish my factoring by grouping. The idea now is that you treat this like two giant terms. So the first term is this r squared times the quantity r plus 1. And the second term is this minus 1 times the quantity r plus 1. And so when you factor the r plus 1 out of both of these terms, r plus 1, not r squared, you're going to be left with the r squared from this term 
and minus 1 from this term. So that's factoring by grouping, if you need to look that up for a little bit more review of that factoring strategy there. Okay, so I can now easily finish factoring the second factor. This is a difference of squares, which is easy to factor. And so once you've factored that down to linear or maybe quadratic, maybe sometimes you have to use quadratic formula, uh, but linear or quadratic factors, then you can get the zeros of this polynomial. You're just setting each of these factors equal to zero. This polynomial is equal to zero whenever any of these factors is equal to zero. So each of the first two factors equal to zero gives you r equals negative one twice. That's important. And then r equals one. All right, so now that I have those zeros of my characteristic polynomial, that allows me to write down my three linearly independent solutions that I'm after in order to build my general solution. So we had a theorem and we verified that this theorem was true. It's pretty easy to show that this works because you're just showing that something actually satisfies the differential equation. The theorem said that if you have distinct real zeros of your characteristic polynomial, that y equals e to that zero, my r value times x is a solution. So r equals negative one, uh, gives me y equals e to the negative 1 x as a solution and r equals 1 gives me y equals e to the 1 x as a solution. So for my distinct real zeros of my characteristic polynomial that gives me two solutions to my differential equation but I need three third order differential equation. And so it's important that you pay attention to this repeated zero which occurs twice and know how to handle that to get that other linearly independent solution. So again, this was a theorem which we looked at in class and we talked about how to verify it. You just write down this solution and then show that it works. It's pretty easy to justify why this works. Um, but when you have these repeated zeros, remember that you can get the other solutions by just multiplying by appropriate powers of x corresponding to the multiplicity of this zero. So I need two linearly independent solutions. From my first one, for, from this one, uh, I got e to the negative one x. For my second one, I will have y2 equals x times e to the negative one x. And if I had a higher multiplicity on this zero of this characteristic polynomial, I could continue to write down solutions just by multiplying by x again every time. Again, it's easy to verify that these solutions work. You just take the appropriate derivatives, plug them into the differential equation, and show that when you plug them in, you really do get zero. So these are my three solutions. That's easy to see. Uh, it's easy to show also that these are linearly independent. You can either use the definition of linear independence or you can use the Ronskian. We showed that in general for distinct real zeros and for repeated zeros. So you don't need to show that every time, but they are also linearly independent. So we've got what we need in order to write down the general solution for this differential equation. So I'm just taking all possible linear combinations of these three linearly independent solutions. And what this represents the general solution, or sometimes we also call that the solution space for this differential equation. So thinking about the ideas related to vector spaces that we talked about a little bit ago. All right, so the other important thing to understand here uh, is that when you do your online homework and you type your solutions in for your online homework, technically it doesn't really matter whether you put e to the negative x first and times c1, or maybe you have that one at the end, times c3. What I'm really looking for here is all linearly independent solutions. But when you type in your answers for online homework, it's important that you pay attention to the directions. Sometimes the directions in the online homework will tell you to write your terms, so that, the, uh, so that the values in the exponents get larger. So they might want your negative zeros of your characteristic polynomial first and second. 
It doesn't actually matter if you're just writing down the general solution, but that's just for the online homework so that it can evaluate whether what you've typed in is correct or not. So be sure when you do that online homework to pay careful attention to those directions so that you type it in the way they want you to. Remember, you can always try the homework problem again, though. If you typed it in and didn't see the directions and it counted it wrong, even though it was really right, you can always try it again and type it in the correct way, and then it should count that right.